Welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to be doing another electric vehicle charger review. Now, I've done a, quite a lot of these electric vehicle charger reviews, which means I now have a collection of electric vehicle chargers, including this, the previous version of the Hypervolt charger. Now, this is the new Hypervolt Pro 3 charger, and I wasn't too impressed with this earlier version's casing design, if you remember from my previous video. They're telling me the new one is now IK10 rated, it's got a much better construction, so we're going to be putting that to the test by getting my wife to try and hit it with a cricket bat. As always, there's chapters down below if you want to skip some of the more technical details and just skip right to my wife trying to hit this thing with a bat. Now we've got the new one here and the old one here for comparison. First of all, you can see the actual Hypervolt logo straight away on the front cover of the new one where you couldn't on the old one. And straight away, I can tell that these plastics at the front are similar but not the same this is this this plastic is in now the reason why i wasn't a fan of this is i wasn't a fan of how structurally sound this was i never tested it but i'm pretty sure it wasn't ik10 then um, and this is now an ik10 rated charger i don't believe the cover forms part of the ik10 i believe it's this main body which we'll get to in a minute but this cover comes off where this was part of the actual chassis of the charger. So that's different. Straight away, we can see that the LEDs here, which are built in here and around this cover, uh, are connected by these pressure switch uh, here, which go onto this front cover. So that goes into there. That lights up the 12 volts into here. Um, so by the looks of it, they might have got rid of the ribbon cable. So we'll get around to that in a minute. You've also got this bracket that holds on the charger at the back. So rather than screwing, uh, screwing through the back or having the hooks like this one had at the back, this one had hook, uh, hooks at the back for putting the, putting the screws through. This is copying very much most of Hypervolt's competitors and making it easier for an engineer just to drill this template on and then click this charger on, which we'll get to when we get to the install part. Now straight away you can see here that this body, this is the waterproof part, the IP rating, the structural soundness, this is a lot lighter than this brick. Um, I mean that's really heavy to pick up, this is a lot lighter, there's a lot less weight in this straight away. There's a rear entry hole here and two bottom ones here, this is definitely uh, better plastic 100 percent it's been molded it's injection molding by the looks of it and it's a, a better higher quality what's going to be interesting is, is uh, when we get these screws off because there's one two three four five six seven eight there's eight screws holding this front cover together so that's quite a lot of screws so let's, let's get them off and see what's uh, inside now we've got the covers off we can definitely see that this new version and the old version are different inside but first of all casing so this was very very soft i mean i can i can I can feel I could break this with my, my hands. This is tough. This is very tough. Uh, so it's good to see that that's a radical improvement. Now, the other thing I wasn't very impressed with this is this had a fan on, which meant that water ingress could get in it. There's no fan on this. Hypervolt removed the fan, so huge improvement there. Massive improvement that they got rid of the fan. An uh, EV charger should never have a fan on it. Should never have a fan on it. So great to see that Hypervolt have finally fixed that and got rid of the fan. I wasn't a fan of the fan. The other thing is the where the uh, power goes in here. This is pretty much the same terminal block that they used before. I'd prefer to see a, a Vargo style block on that. That's just because I don't trust engineers to use torque screwdrivers. What is nice though, they have actually put all ter ter terminals to be tightened to 1.8 newton meters of torque. So it's written inside the box. So you know, basically engineers can't say I can't, I didn't know what the torque setting was. So just, I would prefer Vargo style terminals, you know, keep the engineers away from, you know, dugger duggering the uh, the terminals hit here. I would prefer Vargo style terminals. It's better for customers. It's better for warranties. It's also better for Hypervolt. The other thing in here I've noticed straight away is that the, this computer is different to this. This was the this was a Raspberry Pi originally, which was really disappointing to see because that was just a basically a, 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 an off the shelf Raspberry Pi. It wasn't a comms bus put Raspberry Pi made specifically for going in products like EV chargers, where this is a proper dedicated unit for going in here. Um, the only other thing I've noticed that the only thing that's annoyed me here is there is a Wagyu style terminal block in here. Um, and it's on the pilot cable for the Hypervolt charger. Now, I don't know why on earth uh, that's like that and why that's got a join in there as well. That, to me, should be all taken care of on the PCB or possibly, you know, all sealed in one box. N not with this. I don't know why you'd have a Wago-style um, 
clip in here. It just seems that it was an afterthought and they've made it made it made this maybe made a mistake on the PCB when they were wiring it up, possibly. Um just trying to see if I can spot anything else that's striking me. Oh yes, there is one thing that's striking me. There is two here, two CT clamps. Now you've only got one in the pack. I believe they've got a new app coming for this which will allow two CT clamps very similar to one of their competitors that monitors the solar and uh, your house load. It would be nice to possibly see three CTs in this and then you can monitor house load, battery, AC coupled like I have and house load, but two, one's plenty to do solar, two is definitely better. So you maybe they might have an option to put one on an AC coupled battery, one on the grid. That would stop you from draining your battery. That would be nice to see in the software. If you haven't thought of that hypervolt, there's a hint for you. Um, just trying to see if there's anything else that really strikes me. Ah, so this now is an IP66 cover. So that, that means that it's waterproof up to IP66. So that means there's two problems with this. One is that because it's IP66, you've got lots of screws on it now, which is fine. You know, it's keeping, it's the idea is to keep the cover pressed down so keep the waterproof silver. But that means it's a bit of a pain for engineers and it would be nice for them to be captive. Now, supposedly, they said they're going to make them captive uh, to another YouTuber. I don't think they can in this casing, uh, looking at it. I don't think it's actually possible. I'm just trying to find the front cover. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I don't think they can make those captive. I don't think they've got enough room in it um, unless they retool, which is very unlikely. But if they do do it, that would be a huge improvement. I, I don't like non-captive screws, um, especially when you can drop them and, and they, you know, anyone knows when they've done an EV charge, if you drop a screw, you lose them, which is nice to see that they have provided some spares in the bag. And the only other thing I've noticed, this seal that goes around here, it's not one uh, complete seal. It's got a join in the seal just about here. Uh, what that join means is the IP rating on this could be higher if they used one continuous seal rather than one with a join in it. So that's, you know, possible f uh, room for improvement there for them. It might improve their, their IP rating, um, but IP66 is pretty high compared to most other EV charges. It does mean good dust and good water ingress protection compared to others. Now I put the back bracket on first and basically just drill straight through it. So there's only three screws that hold the back bracket on and then you snap in the rear case at the back and then there's a retaining screw that holds that. Now annoyingly, that retaining screw is a completely different thread to all the other screws on the Hypervolt. Now I've fed this back to them, they said they'll look at changing it and it's been discussed before. And then when you put this front cover on, this is also held in with four retaining screws. There's a hell of a lot of screws when you're installing one of these. Now this front cover is not part of the water tightness or water integrity, so why on earth it can't just clip in with like some plastic clips and then maybe some pressure clips to pull it off. Four extra screws there to hold that in just seems a hell of a lot of screws, not only for doing the, the, the main system. Now the main system makes sense. It's a waterproof seal. It's got to have a certain amount of pressure to have that IP rating with this front cover. Come on, Hypervolt, just make it snap in, uh, you know, really easy and quick. Now, the installer app, dead easy to use. It connects to your Hypervolt by Bluetooth on the installer's mobile phone, and it goes through the setup procedure to check the CT clamps and some various settings. Now, there is like a toggle switch in there to set certain settings. I don't know why that can't be incorporated in the installer's app and maybe get rid of that toggle switch altogether. It'd be nice to see a couple of those test procedures there, but you can turn off a lot of the stuff like uh, delayed charging and stuff like that, so you can do a proper RCD test on all your equipment for the Hypervolt system. They have got a new app in development that's gonna be out soon. Now, there's an extra CT clamp inside this Hypervolt, which means you can have two CTs on it. Now, this is very useful, if, like me, you have home storage system and solar, what you can do is put one CT either on the solar and the grid, in which case you get rich information about what your solar's doing and the grid's doing, or if you've got an AC coupled battery, what you could do is put that AC CT on the AC coupled battery and one on the grid. Now, I don't know if Hyperbot are going to allow it to say, you know, don't discharge that AC coupled battery 
only use excess that's going back to the grid. If they are going to do that, that'd be brilliant. That's what people want who've got AC coupled battery. But even if it's just rich information, if you've got a solar system, you just want that extra information in one app so you can just see what your car's doing and also what the solar's doing. Having those two CTs is a real nice addition to the Hypervolt. Now I did ask about wireless CTs um, to them in a conference call and I just got like a cheeky grin. So whether that means that's coming or whether that means it's been thought about, I don't know. But hopefully we'll see wireless CTs and hopefully we'll see that also allow them to pick between having an AC couple battery or solar system so you can decide in the Hypervolt app what it's going to do. Now the app does have three modes. It has a boost mode, it has a eco-ish mode and then a really super eco mode which means just uh, use the solar. Now in all three modes um, they basically charge the car fine. Now in the middle mode what it does is it'll use a little bit of grid and a little bit of your solar and then bring that up to, to sort of charge your car with a bit of solar, a bit of grid. So if you haven't got a lot of solar that's a good option. The main, the, the big eco mode they've got will only charge the car when you're producing 1.4 kilowatts of solar uh, excess. So if you're not producing that amount of excess of solar, it won't charge the car, which is why the other mode might be useful if you're producing a little bit of solar. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't work with Octopus Agile or Octopus Intelligent. Now these are the two main tariffs from Octopus Energy, but it also doesn't work with um, OVO anytime. Now these adaptive towers require the charger to be a little bit more intelligent in incorporating Octopus's API for Agile, but Intelligent and OVO Drive Anytime require the two energy companies that we've spoken about to agree to let Hypervolt be part of their inner ecosystem. That requires a lot of work. Now everybody Every single energy company, every single charge manufacturer is trying to get on to intelligent and OVO drive anytime. So there's big delays and big queues. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hypervolt have asked to be joining that queue to be on Octopus Intelligent. Now something Hypervolt do have that's unique to them is the LEDs at the front here and the LEDs around the side. Now everybody's going to be different. Some people are going to really love these colour changing LEDs that go really bright or other people are going to be like me and are going to turn the brightness down right to nothing. Now you can have it on zero and you can also have it at set percentages in sort of increments. So depending on what you are you can have them up or down. So if you don't like the LEDs like me you'd turn them down. However I would turn them on during certain times and that would be at the moment it's Halloween so I'd have the Halloween effect for Halloween I hope they're going to be a Christmas effect for Christmas so there is certain times I would have the LEDs turned on but I certainly wouldn't have them on every day and the ability of the app allows you to turn them up down and change from a couple of modes now a couple of features inside it you can lock the charge like the previous version you can have it unlocked or locked if you're worried about people nicking your electric you can also change the amps of the charger in the app so you can default it to 6 amps, 10 amps or whatever you want inside the app. That's a nice little feature. There's some schedule, lot of scheduling effects that you'd expect on any charger being sold at the moment so you can tell it when and hours to charge and put some price data in there if you know what your electricity tariff you're on. So there's a lot of scheduling options in there. Even though you can't use Intelligent, there is options of Octopus Go at the moment which is one of the cheapest tariffs you can get. Um, if you can't get Octopus Intelligent. Now a lot of cars are capable of doing Octopus Intelligent direct via the car API. So if your car can do that, you just set this to boost mode, constantly charging and let the car control it. And it does work and play nicely with cars that can do the API version of Intelligent. You love me, don't you darling? No, I absolutely hate you right now. You hate me? Yeah. Now all chargers are supposed to be IK10 which is a bit beyond what we're about to test it, but Laura, my wife here, is always very angry. Today, she's actually quite happy. It's our anniversary, so uh, I've treated her out for a nice meal. But I'm going to remind her how much I annoyed her yesterday. <laughs> now, take that anger, darling, out on this charger. That Maybe I should turn it off. Um, you're going to hit now with the cookie back. So, off you go, darling. <laughs> I'm going to execute a button hook pattern super slow-mo. Hyperbolt one there, cricket bat nil. Is it not, is it not breaking? <laughs> it really hurts though. 
It's not even dented. Go, keep going. I can't hurt my head. Um, yeah, so I'll tell you what. <laughs> Hit it with the backside of this axe. Oh, my God. Oh, you got a dent. Is it denting? No. No? No, it's just the wrong. Hit it harder. Let <laughs> <laughs> me have a go. Oh, God. <laughs> so as you can see, the cricket bat pretty much disintegrates straight away. It's only a kid's cricket bat. I mean, the idea is this is an IK-10. This bat is not really meant to be hit against any charges. So the fact it took that kind of impact anyway was impressive. Then we obviously you can see we moved on to the axe. And bless her, my wife wasn't angry enough to cause any damage, even though she was giving it a good belt. So I gave it a couple of belts and even I was struggling to get it to crack. I really had to put a lot of force into it. <laughs> I mean, considering this cover's not part of the, the water integrity of the main unit, the back plate unit, that took some real punishment. I mean, it stood up a lot better than I thought it would. I thought it would just completely shatter maybe on the first hit from the cricket bat. The fact it took a couple of swings from the axe, that's really impressed me. But what really impresses me, because this is 12 volts, this is low volts, what you can do is still do this. And that is plug it in. It still works as a charger. Even though this plate's damaged, this is just 12 volts. It's low voltage. The high voltage stuff is in the back part of the unit where it's all sealed up in the IP seal, all waterproof tight. This front seal can be sacrificial. So if you reversed your car into it and did damage it and you didn't want to buy a replacement front cover, you can. But these front covers are £60 plus fat each from Hypervolt. You can even change the colour if you were bored of having it white. You can have a grey or a black one or buy another white one, which is precisely what I've done. So all I'm going to do is take the four screws out of here, like I did when I was installing it, and just put the new faceplate on. And I've got a perfectly working charger, even after smashing it with an axe. Now, I've previously looked at the previous version, as we saw earlier on the video, and I've reviewed that version. Now, this new version has come a long, long way from its previous version. This is a much, much better product than the early Hypervolt. They've made huge improvements to it. And a lot of people might comment that they haven't changed the size. They've still kept it a large unit. And people who don't like large units, who have smaller units, will have one problem, and that is cable management. And the advantage of a large unit like this is it's got a groove at the back, which means that you can self-cable manage at the back. It's got this nice little holster, but I wouldn't use the holster, however nice it is. I would just wrap the cable directly round the unit, nice and tight like this. And then when you've wrapped it right around the back, I just leave it dangling like that. All the water will run out. It just keeps it neater for me on the wall. Now, if this unit isn't for you, then check out the playlist here of all the other reviews I've done of EV charges so far, or go to evnick.com forward slash charge.